All right, I guess it's time. Trans soul. Uh, the music for this section is Chronopolis from Chrono Cross. Uh, all right, this is going to be a tough one. If you're a weepy crybaby who gets emotionally attached to video game characters, like I do, then this is going to be hard to do. Um, on the other hand, if you're an adult, you'll recognize that Trans Soul is an interesting idea. Essentially, you need to sacrifice a knight after choosing a recipient. The recipient will, will receive experience, vitality, and his law or chaos indices will be influenced. Furthermore, the recipient will have his or her level cap raised. So, right now, Johan's max level is 18. That can be increased if he receives a knight's soul through trans soul. The donating knight is deleted from the game. So yeah, uh, you're asking your knights to make the ultimate sacrifice for their friends. And just to kick you in the feelings, the sacrificed knight has one last chance to talk. Alright, well, so, the reasons for doing this. Um, for one, it raises the level cap of the receiving knight and gives them experience. And two, it hopefully will improve their law index and chaos index. I haven't talked too much about the law and chaos indices, and to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about them. I do know that they max at 100, and you want them to be as high as possible. Uh, they are extremely important to the modifiers to your damage. Uh, there's some long, complicated math drawn out over at GameFAQs, so if you want to stare into the abyss, go ahead. I'm content with knowing that I want those numbers to be high. It probably goes without saying, but a high law index means you do da more damage in law phase, and a high chaos index means you do more damage in chaos phase. So, if you look at the donating knight's law index, uh, to put it in simplest terms, uh, if the donating knight's law index is higher than the receiving knight's, you should see the receiver's law index go up. Uh, it is possible to see it go down, but that usually is because the donating knight's index is lower than the receiver's. At any rate, you're given an indication of what will happen before you pull the trigger. So, uh, let's try it out. Um, Marden. I want you to sacrifice yourself to Michelle. Alright, let's look at the top screen. Um, that big black triangle is Michelle's stat web or whatever. Uh, you can see at the top of the triangle where the color is kind of yellow. Um, looks like Michelle's vitality should improve a bit with this transole. See how the vitality is the top of the large black triangle? Uh, and with this transole, Michelle's vitality pushes up a little towards the top. Uh, there's an easier way to check this. Uh, look to the upper right of Michelle's sprite. Uh, there's a thought balloon showing what will happen if we do this transole. So it looks like vit vitality takes a big increase, while the law index stays the same and chaos index has a small gain. So if we go through with this transole, Michel will gain a decent amount of vitality, but his indices will stay mostly the same. Um, this means he'll be able, able to perform more attacks due to his raised vitality, but the power of his attacks won't actually change. Furthermore, his experience level should rise, his cap, excuse me, should rise, but we won't know how much until we do it. Well, uh, Martin right now, he's my only Lance Knight, so I'd have to be nuts to do this. So we're going to back down. Sorry, Michelle, no soul for you. And Martin lives another day. Let's try another example. Um, bon, you are going to be sacrificed to Moira. So you can see on the right side of the triangle where it gets red, it uh, looks like your chaos index will improve with this trans soul. And we can see that easier above Moira's head with the thought balloon. Uh, looks like her vitality will stay the same. Uh, her law index will have a slight increase, but her chaos index will have a large increase. So this is looking pretty good, really. Here's the thing. Um, there's nothing really noticeable about these guys that would indicate that Bond would boost her chaos index so well. I mean, yeah, um, here's his stats, and he has a 40, 55 chaos index, while she has a 44. So he naturally does have a higher chaos index, but is it really that significant? Well, there's a twist here. If we did more pause talks with Moira, she would eventually mention Bon, and it turns out that they're buddies. So they have a good personal relationship. Now this supersedes any other stat. So, if you do the pause talks, you're rewarded with this information. And you can find out relationships like this and then exploit them cruelly. Yeah, 
We're going to sacrifice Bond for Moria. Sorry, buddy, but I can't pass this up. <laughs> oh, I hate this. Oh, my God. All right. God. <laughs> okay. So, um, what did we gain here? Uh, her Law Index went up by 2, but her Chaos Index went up by 12. Now, that's not bad. Remember, the Indices max at 100, so a jump up to 12 is not too shabby. In addition, her Experience Level cap rose to 21. Uh, it was 20 before, so that's a little disappointing. And finally, her Vitality didn't budge as predicted. All right, that's friggin' Transol, not very fun. The game makes a point to twist a knife when you do it. Uh, we do have another pair of knights that we know are buddies. Uh, you remember how Michelle specifically mentioned Johan during a pause talk? Uh, they are pals. So, I smell another relationship we can exploit. Michelle, I want you to sacrifice yourself to Johan. And uh, wow, uh, looks like Johan stands to gain quite a lot with this. Um, his Law and Chaos Indices are going to jump quite a bit. Well, I'm not going to pass this up, but for sake of argument, let's switch the roles. So cancel out. Alright, Johan, I want you to sacrifice yourself to Michelle. Looks like Michelle would gain some good vitality and Law Index, while his Chaos Index would gain a lot too. Well, nice try, but no cigar. Johan's our warrior, so we're going to switch back. Yeah, this is too good to pass up for Johan. Right. Sorry, Michelle. <laughs> I know you don't deserve this, but it's for the greater good. Ah, fuck. Alright, um, Johan's Law Index went up 15, same with his Chaos Index, now that's great. Uh, holy shit, his Vitality went up 1, alright, not phenomenal, but we'll take it. Uh, finally, his level cap went up a little, but not too much. All in all, this is a very good transhole though, and as far as I'm aware, that's all the knights we have right now that have special relationships. I do happen to know that the special pre-order bonus book for the game has an entry for Johan, which says, Johan is always worried about the well-being of his mother, Nadia. He's incredibly homesick, but he continues to endure because he wants to make a difference in the kingdom. Lisbeth tends to worry about him and does her best to take care of him. Johan has a secret crush on Lear, but he's afraid to tell her how he feels. So. Uh, that tells us Johan has special relationships with Lisbeth and Lear. Uh, Lisbeth is apparently the motherly type, which would certainly appeal to Johan since he's kind of a mama's boy anyway. And he apparently carries a torch for Lear, so she would be a good candidate for the trans soul. Um, however, neither of those will come to pass. Uh, way, way in the back when I did my introduction video, I mentioned that I was taking the Red Paths playthrough. Uh, that's basically the default path. And unfortunately, neither Lisbeth nor Lear are available in the Red Path. So we're not going to see them this playthrough. Uh, that's too bad. I wanted to exploit their personal relationships um, so I could benefit myself. But not to worry. Uh, there will be other knights with special relationships and we'll be able to watch one sacrifice himself or herself to the other. What fun! Anyway, uh, right now, like I said, we don't have any more knights that have special relationships. So any more transholes we would want to do would adhere to the normal calculations uh, for received indices and vitality. Uh, there are a ton of factors that affect what you gain. Uh, the donor's indices, the recipient's indices, the donor's loyalty, the recipient's current level, etc. Uh, even the races of the donor and recipient matter. I know a few more details, but to be honest, I'm on shaky grounds with how all this works. I know there's discussion on GameFAQs, so once again I refer you there if you want to know more. 
As for me, I'm going to stick with systematically pairing up knights and watching for the large bonuses. As a general rule, if the donor has a higher law index than the recipient, then the um, recipient should see an increase upon transsoul. And you just have to keep, uh, keep in mind it's a balancing act, uh, because it's certainly possible that the donor could have a lower chaos index than the recipient, and upon transsoul, uh, transsoul the recipient could take a penalty. In some cases, you'll have to take a, a hit in order to uh, get a big gain on the other one. Um, uh, what else? Oh uh, yeah, uh, in the distributing experience section, I mentioned that sometimes you don't want to level up to your max. Uh, the reason for that is because the, so the level cap increase that you get from Transsoul seems to be related to how much uh, lower you are than your cap. Basically, you seem to be rewarded for Transsouling with lower level guys. Um, that's another thing I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over. Uh, and I think, I think that's it. No, no, wait. Uh, yo loyalty, excuse me. So loyalty apparently influences how much vitality and experience gets transsold. Uh, you can increase a unit's loyalty by using him or her in battle, and over time the loyalty rises. Um, that's great, but I'm not going to give it another thought. I don't like transsoul. It's pretty cruel when you think about it. But uh, it does force you to make choices, and it's pretty interesting. All right, I think I'm done with this. Go back to the setup screen. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot. Um, yeah, we uh, sacrificed Bon and Michelle. They're gone. Uh, if you happen to see them in other sections of this update, uh, that's just due to the fact that I recorded it in a different order. So um, from this point on, uh, as far as the game is concerned, Bon and Michelle are gone. They're not with us anymore. Uh, 